Psalm 1824. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad today. Good morning, church. Pastor Linda from Bethel Thedford here. And it's Wednesday, May the 13th, and the time is 11 a.m. Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7 tells us not to worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for what he has done. And then you will experience God's peace that passes all understanding. And his peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you every day for just giving us a new day, a new day that we can wake up and we can say, thank you, Lord, that we can give you praise and honor. And Lord, today is a beautiful day out there. The sun is shining, the wind is down, and it's got so much potential. Help us to use that potential, Lord. Help us to do your will. Use us, make us your instruments, but guide us, Lord, and give us a discernment to know what it is we're supposed to do. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Okay, the weather network today, it's six degrees out already. And it's supposed to go up to uh, 10 degrees today. And it's supposed to be sunny well into the afternoon. And according to the hourly report on uh, Weather Network Lambton Shores, between uh, the hours of 3 and 8, the temperature is going to be 10 degrees. And the wind gusts won't be any more than 20. Now that's what it's saying on the report. That doesn't necessarily mean what's going to happen. There's no rain scheduled for today, but Chances of rain tomorrow and Friday are quite high, 90% for tomorrow and 80% for Friday. But by next Friday, the temperatures are going to be up to 22 degrees. Praise the Lord. Tonight, it's going to be a low of plus 4, and it will be sunny well into the evening, becoming partly cloudy overnight. So we're getting our spring weather. Praise God. The Lambton County, or the Lambton Shores report for COVID-19. The confirmed cases are 204. That's one more than yesterday. The deaths still remain at 17. Thank you, Jesus. The confirmed cases recovered is up one, so it's 146. Then we jump into the Ontario report, and the confirmed case is 21,236. That's up 329, but yesterday's increase was 361, so we're in the downswing again, and Lord, we ask that we continue on that slope. Deaths are up to 1,765. Yesterday it was 1,725, so that's 40 additional people have died. Confirmed cases recovered, 15,845. Hospitalized, 1,018. In intensive care, 189. And on the ventilator, 144. <clears throat> Those numbers have all gone down. Now, the demographics or the breakdown by age. The uh, male and female remains the same. Men uh, that are affected is 42%, and women that are affected are 57.3%. And the, uh, the age demographics, 19 and under, is 2.7%. That's the least um, percentage. 20 to 39 years of age is 23.8%. 40 years to 59 years, that's 30.5%. That's the highest one. 60 years to 79 years is 21.4%, and then uh, people over the age of 80 is 21.6% affected by the COVID-19. Now that tells us that between the ages of 20 and 59, and that's the ages that people are the most uh, active, um, they're the, at the highest risk, and that's because they're out in the public more, whether it's for their jobs or for activities, so people, you need to be cautious. You need to continue using the uh, social distancing format and continue washing your hands. Wash, wash, wash those hands. 
the uh, report from the Premier's office. Uh, this is yesterday's. Speaking to reporters, Ford said Ontario will hit stage one of their province's three-stage framework for reopening the economy released some weeks ago, starting on Thursday. On Thursday, we will share more good news, Ford said, adding the announcement could see the reopening of some seasonal businesses, low-risk workplaces, and essential services. Now, you need to uh, listen to all of those words. It says could. doesn't say would. Ontario's Chief Medical Officer of Health, Dr. David Williams, says he isn't confident the province has met the threshold to embark on Stage 1 of its reopening plan. The Premier said details of Stage 1 will be unveiled Thursday. The Ontario government is extending the declaration of emergency under the Emergency Management and Civil Protections Act. This additional time will ensure the province has the necessary tools and health care capacity to contain COVID-19 while gradually reopening businesses, services, and amenities safely. Passed during a special sitting of the Ontario Legislature today, that's yesterday, the declaration of emergency has been extended until June the 2nd. The declaration will allow Ontario to continue to enforce current emergency orders, such as restricting retirement and long-term care home employees from working in more than one facility and prohibiting events and gatherings of more than five people. Since the emergency was first declared on March 17, the government has taken over 150 actions to help protect individuals, families, and businesses from the impacts of COVID-19. Premier Doug Ford will make an announcement alongside his education minister this afternoon. That's today, this afternoon. Ford said over the weekend that Education Minister Stephen Leachy would be making an announcement about the fate of the school year this week. Though on Monday he told reporters that the news wouldn't come until early next week and would be accompanied by some indication of when child care centers would be allowed to reopen. They're just crossing the T's and dotting the I's on the plans going forward, he said at the time. Schools have been closed in the province since March 13 to limit the spread of COVID-19. So that's something that everybody's been waiting for to find out what's going to happen with the schools and the school children. We know that the uh, proms and graduation ceremonies are postponed either to the summer or to the fall. So we just have to wait and see what's going to happen with everything else. The Canada Report. Confirmed cases, 71,157. That's 1,176 more than yesterday. And yesterday's was 1,133, so we're still on the upswing. Deaths among uh, the cases, 5,169. Yesterday it was 4,993. Confirmed cases recovered, 34,042. Since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, the Government of Canada has introduced measures to support seniors. We invested $1.3 billion in a one-time special payment through the Goods and Services uh, GST created in April. More than 4 million seniors benefited from this top-up, which gave an average of $375 for single seniors and 510 for senior couples. We also invested in community organization that provide practical services to Canadian seniors, including the delivery of groceries and medications. The Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, today announced a series of additional measures to help Canadian seniors and provide them with greater financial security in the t this time of crises. When it says today, that means it's yesterday's report. These measures include providing additional financial support of $2.5 billion for a one-time tax-free payment of $300 for seniors eligible for the Old Age Security, OAS, 
and an additional $200 for seniors eligible for the Guaranteed Income Supplement, GIS. This measure would give a total of $500 to individuals who are eligible to receive both OAS and GIS and will help them cover increased costs caused by COVID-19. Expanding the New Horizons for Seniors programs with an additional investment of $20 million to support organizations that offer community-based projects that reduce isolation improve the quality of life for seniors, and help them maintain a social support network. Temporarily extending GIS and the allowance payments of seniors' 2019 income information has not been assessed. This will ensure that most vulnerable seniors continue to receive their benefits when they need them the most. To avoid an interruption in benefits, seniors are encouraged to submit the 2019 income information as soon as possible and no later than October the 1st. The Government of Canada will continue to monitor and respond to the health, social and economic impacts of COVID-19. We stand ready to take additional actions as needed to support all Canadians, including seniors, and stabilize the economy. Well, there's all kinds of news that's being made available to us. We just have to sort it out and uh, see what is going to be applicable. I know the one thing that uh, disturbed me just a tad is uh, when I went to get medications renewed at the drugstore, you can only get one month at a time now. And that means that you have to pay for the uh, dispensing fee every month. It used to be that you got three months at a time. Uh, so you only paid a third of the dispensing fees, obviously. But now you've got to pay it up. And I know uh, with seniors that it's a copay because uh, uh, seniors pay a lesser amount. But it still means you have to pay it three times instead of once. So we'll see how that works out. See how long this COVID-19 uh, goes on. And the best way to shorten it is to continue to social distance and to continue to washing your hands and use wisdom in everything that we do. Our scripture for today is uh, the balance of Psalm 27, it's verses 7 to 14. Lord, hear me when I call. Have mercy and answer me. My heart said of you, go worship him. So I come to worship you, Lord. Do not turn away from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have helped me. Do not push me away or leave me alone. God, my Savior. If my father and mother leave me, the Lord will take me in. Lord, teach me your ways. Guide me to do what is right, because I have enemies. Do not hand me over to my enemies, because they tell lies about me and say they, they'll hurt me. I truly believe I will live to see the Lord's goodness. Wait for the Lord's help. Be strong. Be brave. And wait for the Lord's help. Thank you, Lord, for your name. And God's word also tells us that we need to pray for all people, especially those in authority, our leaders. And that's in 1 Timothy 2. It's verses 1 to 5. I tell you to pray for all people, asking God for what they need and being thankful to him. Pray for rulers and for all who have authority so that we can have quiet and peaceful lives full of worship and respect for God. This is good and it pleases God, our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to know the truth. There is one God, one mediator, so that human beings can reach God. That way is through Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the news reports that we get every day. We thank you that we're able to stay up to date on what's happening. And we thank you, Lord, for continuing to give us good health and strength and coming into the spring summer season we thank you for the beautiful weather that you've given to us and we thank you for a timely rain so that the crops in the fields 
will have the opportunity to grow. And Lord, I ask that you be with all of the farmers out there. They're trying to get all the work done. And there's so many days that they can get the planting done before the crops need to be doing the growing and then harvesting. There's a season for everything. I ask, Lord, that you direct our paths, help us to do what is right in your eyes. Help us to use wisdom in everything that we do. Help us to make right decisions that we don't do something that's going to be hazardous to our health or to other people's health. Help us to continue to follow the regulations that are set forth, to keep social distancing going, and to keep the hygiene practices in place that we need to so that the country can reopen. You know, Lord, of what I've said before, sometimes we do have to shut down before we can open up because that helps us to do things in the right way. Be with each of us, Lord. Keep us strong. Keep us focused. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 4, make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. We rely on God's Word in all things. I know not everybody is a believer, but you'll find you have more peace when you can focus on the Creator of all things. Isaiah 41.10 says, Don't worry, because I am with you. Don't be afraid, because I am your God. I will make you strong and I will help you. I will support you with my right hand that saves you. Continue to pray for each other. Continue to reach out to help others. Remember to pray for our leaders. And the best help that we can give them is to follow their directions. And I know I've, I've heard it that while Premier Ford, he telling us to do one thing and doing another. He went to the cottage. He had family over. Yes, that doesn't mean that you have to follow the pack. It means you have to follow the directions. And if you listen to the whole thing, he went straight to the cottage and straight back without doing any shopping, which is more that can be said with other people. And as far as the family coming, apparently they had stayed on the grass or whatever. I'm not sure. It's not up to me to judge. What is up to me is to follow the directions, and that's what's up to you as well. It's a choice. Everything is a choice. Salvation is a choice as well. Think about it. God bless each and every one of you, and may God be with you until we meet again, and that'll be about the same time tomorrow. Have a good day.